Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to create a simple CRUD API using .NET 9, Dapper as a micro RM, and SQL Server as our database. Before we dive into the code, let's take a moment to understand what Dapper is. Dapper is a lightweight micro ORM. Unlike full-fledged ORMs like Entity Framework, Dapper focuses on performance and simplicity. And Dapper works directly with your database using raw SQL queries offering fine-grained control over your database operations. Dapper doesn't track changes to your objects or provide advanced features like migrations, but this lack of overhead is what makes it incredibly fast and efficient. So I've already set up my .NET 9 minimal API project. First, let's clear out the program.cs file. Next, we need to install Dapper and the database client. So go to Manage NuGet Packages and install Dapper Library. Click Install. This will be our micro ORM, which we'll use to write database queries. We'll also install a database provider. For this example, I'll be using SQL Server. So let's add the SQL client package as well. I have created a product database, which contains a product table in SQL Server. Now let's create a folder named Endpoints to organize our API endpoints. Now let's create a class called Product Endpoints which will handle all product-related endpoints. This will be a static class, and I'll add a static method inside to map our endpoints. I'll call it mapProductEndpoints, and it will be an extension method. This approach provides great reusability and keeps our code organized. Now I'm going to create our first endpoint. This minimal API get all products endpoint will return all the products in our database. We need a class to map to our database table. So I'll start by creating a new folder to hold my database models and call it Entities. Inside this folder, I'll add a new class to represent the products. I've marked this as sealed, and now let's add a few properties to our product entity. First, I'm going to add an ID. Next, I'll add the name property, along with the price and stock properties, and assign zero to the price and stock by default, and then I'll assign string empty to the name property. Now our product entity is ready. So let's run our first Dapper query to get all the products from the database and return them from our API. First, I'm going to write a SQL query to retrieve everything from the product table. I'll start with select star from product. Now, generally speaking, using select star isn't a good practice because it fetches all the columns, even if you only need a few. Later in this video, I'll show you how to properly select specific columns instead. Next, I'll set up a new SQL connection from the Microsoft data.sql client namespace by passing in the connection string. Here I'll pass an empty string. Let's add the connection string to our project in the app settings.json file. I'll create a new section called connection strings, and in there, I'll add a key named db connection string. The value for this connection string will point to local SQL Server instance and the product db database. Now I'm going to access the connection string defined in the app settings.json file by injecting iConfiguration into my endpoint. Here I'll use configuration.getConnectionString method to pass the db connection string key. Then I'll pass the connection string to the SQL connection constructor. Now that our SQL query and SQL connection are ready, let's execute the query using Dapper. So let's use connection.queryAsync which is a method available through the Dapper library. It's also generic, so we can specify the return type of this query. I'll specify our product entity, and we just need to pass in our SQL query, and Dapper will handle the execution. Since this method is asynchronous, you can await it, but you'll also need to make the entire method asynchronous. Then assign the return value to the product's variable. Now we can simply return our products from this endpoint. I'll use return results .ok products and run the application. Here's Postman. I'll run our endpoint by hitting send. We get an empty product array because we don't have any products in our database right now. But we've successfully connected to the database using Dapper without any errors. All right, let's define our create product endpoint. I'll copy our get all products endpoint and make the necessary changes accordingly. First, I'll change the mapGet method to mapPost 
Next, I'll add a DTOs folder to our project to define a DTO for creating a product. Next, I'll define the create product request DTO as a record. This DTO will include the property's name, price, and stock. The name property will represent the product's name, while price and stock will hold the respective values for the product's price and stock quantity. Then I'll use this create product request DTO in the request body. This is where the product data will be provided before we store it in the database. Next, let's write a SQL statement to insert a new product into the database. We'll use insert into product. Then, I'll specify the individual column names, ID, name, price, and stock. After that, we need to provide values for these columns. We'll make them parameters, which we'll pass through Dapper. I'm going to use the execute async method to execute the SQL query asynchronously. Along with the SQL query, I'll pass an anonymous object where the properties match the parameters defined in the SQL query. This allows us to pass values dynamically into the query. Then, I'm going to return results created to indicate that the product has been successfully created. Now, let's run the application. Here in Postman, I've defined sample product details. Let's send this request to our API, and we should get back a 201 created response. Now, if I check the Get All Products endpoint, you'll see that our new product is listed there. So, our post endpoint is working as expected. Now, I'm going to make a small improvement. Here, you can see that both endpoints access the connection string from app settings.json file and create in SQL connection. So, I'm going to move these steps into a separate class. I am going to add a new folder called database to our project and create a new class called product DB context. What we'll do here is create a service class that exposes a single method called create. This method will be responsible for creating and returning a new SQL connection. Instead of repeating the code for creating a connection in multiple places, we'll centralize it in this method. Whenever we need to create a SQL connection, we can simply call this method, which will return the connection object ready to be used for database operations. Now we need to pass the connection string to the SQL connection. So, I'm going to add a private read-only string that will represent my connection string. Once that's set, I can pass this connection string to the SQL connection when creating it. Now I'll inject iConfiguration into the constructor and use it to access the connection string from the app settings.json file. Then, I'll pass the connection string into the SQL connection. Now we need to register this class as a singleton in program.cs so that it can be accessed from the endpoints. Let's refactor the code. I'll remove the connection string from here. Here I am going to create the SQL connection from the product DB context that we defined earlier. So I'll remove iConfiguration and inject product DB context into my endpoint. Then I will call the create method to create a new SQL connection. Let's make the same changes to the create product endpoint. Now let's run the application and see if the changes are working correctly. In Postman, run the get all products endpoint and you'll see that we get back the product that was created earlier. Now let's create our next endpoint to fetch a single product from the database, and this will be a get endpoint. So I'll copy the get all products endpoint and make the necessary changes. The route is going to be product slash ID, where ID is a GUID. In the request delegate, I can access the ID from the route along with the product DB context. I'm going to change the query slightly by adding a WHERE clause, which will filter the results where the ID of the product is equal to the product ID that I'll pass as a parameter. Then I'll change SELECT STAR to specify the column names, as it's considered better practice. I will do the same thing for the GET ALL PRODUCTS query, changing SELECT STAR to specify the columns instead of using STAR. Now I'm going to change the query method to SINGLE OR DEFAULT ASYNC which will fetch a single product based on the ID. Here also need to pass a parameter, which is the product ID, and I'll assign it the value coming from the route I mentioned earlier. And I update products to product. Since the product might not exist in the database and could potentially be null, 
we need to handle both cases. If the product is found and is not null, we'll return a successful response with the product details using results.ok. On the other hand, if the product doesn't exist or is null, we'll return a results.notfound response to indicate that no product was found with the provided ID. I'm going to name this endpoint get product by ID. Let's run the application and see if this endpoint is working. In Postman, I will pass the ID to the endpoint and send the request. We're going to get back a single product that we fetched using Dapper. If I pass in a non-existing product ID, we're going to get a 404 not found response. So everything is working correctly. Now let's implement the endpoint for updating a product. So I'll copy the post method and make the necessary changes. First, I'll change map post to map put and I'm going to give it a route of product slash ID where I'll provide the ID of the product and its type is GWT. This is also asynchronous and here, I need the updated product details from the API and product deep context. So I create an update product request DTO as a record type, which includes properties for ID, name, price, and stock. Now I'm going to use the update product request DTO in my endpoint to receive the updated product details from the request. So let's update the endpoint body by starting with the SQL query for updating the product in the database. I'm going to update the product's table by setting the name, price, and stock columns to their respective parameter values. These parameters will be provided dynamically when making the update request, ensuring that only the specified product attributes are modified while keeping the other data intact. I'm going to add a WHERE clause to the SQL query, specifying that the ID of the product being updated must match the ID provided as a parameter. This ensures that only the intended product record is modified in the database. Now I'll await the execute async method on the SQL connection and pass in the update product request DTO. This DTO already contains properties that match the parameters in the SQL query, allowing Dapper to map the values correctly. I'm going to return results.noContent as the response, which indicates that the product has been successfully updated but no content needs to be returned. I've missed one step. We need to define the ID here. Let's run the application and check if the update product endpoint is working correctly. I have set up the request body with the updated product values. Let's send the request and check. We get back a 204 response. Let's try fetching the same product from the database and you'll see that the name, price, and stock of the product were updated. Let's implement the delete product endpoint. I am going to copy the update endpoint and make the relevant changes. So first, I'll change map put to map delete. This is also asynchronous and takes the ID from the route and product DB context. I'm going to write a delete statement. Delete from products where product ID equals at ID, where the product ID is equal to the ID passed as a parameter to the query. Let's call connection.execute async, passing in the SQL query and an anonymous object containing the product ID. And now from the endpoint, I can return results.no content after successfully deleting the product. Let's run the application and see if this is working correctly. In Postman first, I'll try to get the product with the ID that we created earlier. I am going to delete the product through our endpoint. We received the 204 response, which means the product was successfully deleted. Let's try to fetch the product for the same ID. You can see the 404 not found response, which means the product was successfully deleted from the database. Now you know how to implement a CRUD API using Dapper. In future videos, I'll be showing you how to implement the repository pattern with Dapper. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on more content. See you in the next video. Happy coding!